the Protectors of the Wood Adventure Series. Episode number 187. Abby and Jeremy have a talk. Abby found Jeremy watering the churchyard plants and understood why the garden looked so good with no rain. Jeremy, thanks for taking care of the garden. I'm so glad to see you. You know, Abby, Jim and I spent most of our time upgrading furnaces and vehicles to run on biogas. Chi-Chi is pushing us to help prepare for a bad winter. He keeps saying a crisis is coming with the United Nations Conference in River City and with Wendy's predictions that enormous storms are coming. I don't know what to think about these rumors, but I'm happy to be a technician and do my job. It's a really interesting job and we've accomplished a lot. I knew this was the plan, but I had no idea they'd be on it so quickly. And so openly. All of a sudden, they don't seem worried about going public with the biogas plan. This is really important for me to know. Sarah wants to publish an article on Middletown and biogas. And her college professor wants to present a paper to his United Nations committee, no less. Okay. I see you're in charge, Abby. I told you so. You've got to admit, I was right about some things. Abby's eyes teared up. Oh, Jeremy, forgive me. I do admit it. You saved us all from a big mess just when I wanted to jump in. I don't know how you foresaw these things. It wasn't hard. Everyone saw it coming. Except you. So, we have to keep you on track. Every leader needs advisors. You know. Abby opened her arms and bowed. I accept. I promise to listen better than before. Let me say a few things quickly then. First, I have a note from you, from Chi Chi. We're not allowed cell phones. So he'll communicate through me sometimes. Second, I'm not in the youth council anymore. He's keeping me away from public contact with any political oriented activities. I feel lucky I'm still allowed to garden here. Jeremy glanced around and said, Let's walk to the back. In a moment, they were on the bird watcher's path. Jeremy handed her the note and she slipped it into her back pocket. How are you taking all of this? You're kind of in a prison like me, not free to just have a regular life. I know, but remember, I told you I had it too easy. I'm doing my best to adjust and the tech part is great. I just miss you and the band and everyone really I'm cut off from my social life. Abby took a deep breath. <sighs> but what about Phoebe? They were afraid to talk in the privet fort after their trauma of being photographed. So they turned around and walked back. It seems like Phoebe and I only see each other on the sneak. It's strange. Part of it works because... She's on the biogas plan and advises everyone on new stalkers. Do you know the old ones are gone? Yes, I talked to Sule and Nico already. They've made a big difference. Phoebe's role has expanded. She's in charge of the whole Evansville trip. Amongst other things, You'll get an earful tonight in the Youth Council meeting. And, by the way, the Youth Council is now mostly young teens. It's not about planning community festivals or church finances right now. There's been big changes in strategy since that incredible election last Sunday. 
Listen, I should be going. They want us to act like we're just accidental gardening partners. They were out in front of the abandoned school building. The scaffolding was still covering the front wall, but no work had been done since over a week ago. When are you coming back? Probably Monday. If Chi-Chi tries to take this job away, I'm going to complain. Me too. They parted with no hug or kiss on the cheek. Jeremy held out his fist and they touched for a second. He turned and was gone. The last rays of the sun shone in Abby's eyes. With Jeremy gone, she focused on a strange feeling she'd noticed some time ago. It had increased when they walked into the wild area. Abby realized that she could feel the mapstick. It was close by, only a few feet away. She knew it was there and she could tell just by walking nearby. She took a deep breath and felt incredible relief. She admitted to herself that she had been worried about the safety of the mapstick all day long. And now she knew everything was okay. And any time she was worried, if she could just walk through the back of the churchyard, she would know. Yes, we can communicate from a distance. I'll have to test out how close I have to be. And what if this ability grows over time? She told herself, don't get your hopes up. Abby walked into her cottage and pulled the note from her back pocket. It was a half sheet of standard paper in a standard envelope with Abby written on the front. She sat in her bed and was shocked to read the handwritten words. To the ghost girl, with dear memories of childhood and high hopes for our future, I have accepted with enthusiasm the assignment of meeting you next Friday, August 21st, at 5 p.m. on the north bank of the Half Moon River, just beyond Cemetery Bridge. We ride to Evansville for the events lined up through Sunday morning. New doors are opening. We'll return by Sunday evening. Be there. River Girl thinks of you. Abby read it three times. Her fingers trembled. A thrill ran through her body. This was indeed a signal from fate. The beating heart of her childhood coming back to life. Opening up the world of the present. She carefully put the letter in her back pocket, intending to guard it there all week.
feathers to the leaves Waves of peace fill the air I feel you Trillions of living things are everywhere around Our lives are all planted deep into the sacred ground There's everything to love and everything to fear It's planet Earth in the universe and nature lives here It's planet Earth in the universe and nature lives here It's planet Earth in the universe and nature lives here it's planet Earth in the universe and nature lives here And nature lives here 